Hello my dear friends, you are in the Military of Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 18th of April of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. But before we start discussion the situation on the ground, very interesting updates are coming from the European Union and NATO countries. According to information we have, the third 155 military millimeter factory to suffer explosion fire this week. Two uh, were in the United States and one was in the United Kingdom. Uh, two Russian saboteurs were arrested arrested in Germany. So this is a very big scandal of course and this um, another let's say batch another batch of problem the wave of a wave of problem for Ukraine because uh, uh, but from one side one side we can say that of course this situation will reduce the um, western possibilities to produce 155 mm shells but uh, nobody can give a, a strict answer how uh, how much uh, how exactly those attacks uh, let's say damage the factories maybe uh, those were nothing and just a situation this is the first thing another thing important thing that is obviously during the next few weeks the cost for 155 millimeter shells will be increased significantly maybe even in two times so maybe all these things all these rumors about let's say explosions on the factors is just a way out to increase the cost for 155 millimeter shells because currently it's a very interesting and very profitable business as I understand and the same story we got uh, from the NATO countries, uh, from NATO itself, that within only a couple days of um, each uh, other, the two NATO artillery factory plants experienced fire. Could be a coincidence, could be that the amount of new workers they're taking on this on and stress on existing workers, it um, is causing them to be careless. And another, of course, point of view is that from another side, maybe the Western countries and NATO countries try to reduce the cost of 155 millimeter shells. So that's why, as uh, it's written in this article, they try to hire not, uh, let's say, qualified uh, people. And further, maybe they're using, let's say, not so, mm, qual not very good of very good quality parts for this type of weapons. So that's why we see significant number of explosions and something like this. Anyway, you know, during the next few days or weeks, I've been understanding because to understand uh, what exactly happened and what was the reason of that situation. Uh, now we're moving to the situation in Ukraine. Uh, today we got some more details, additional details about the Russian missile strikes that took place in uh, Chernigov at the headquarters of the Armed Forces of Ukraine Group North in the building of the former Hot uh, Hostel in Chernigov, the deaths of mercenaries from the engineering battalion of the French Legion as well as Polish military mine engineers was confirmed. In addition, uh, in the dormitory itself, they were located the personnel of Lvov, Lviv, uh, let's say, Defense Brigade and civilian rotation workers involved in the construction of the fortifications of Armut Force of Ukraine between Kiev, the Kiev and Chernigov regions. So this is the results of Russian attack that took place yesterday. Uh, now we are moving to the south and we have additional video on the first video, first geolocated confirmation video of how the Ukrainians were attacked attack in Crimea with attack missiles. So this video show us the ballistic missiles that were sent by the Ukrainians. If you remember yesterday we were talking about the strike, we saw the consequences of attack, we saw lots of explosions and the Ukrainians were saying that as a result of that attack they managed to destroy uh, the Russian base with a significant number of air defense systems but yet we haven't received even a single video or photo confirmation of destroyed uh, say, air defense systems. Now let's move to the situation on the ground and first let's talk about Kharkiv direction. The Russians continue clearing the borderlands uh, from Ukrainian soldiers. Few more FAPs arrived in the area in the vicinity of the town by the name of Veliki Prihody. Uh, north in Kupin's direction we haven't received anything, just a small activity, a small counter artillery duels between Russian forces and Ukrainian forces that ended of course in Russian favor. But when talking about the central Kupinsk direction we have some additional updates from the territory and uh, the Russians during the previous 24 hours conducted few successful onset strikes. As a result of those strikes the Ukrainians had losses, they lost few armored vehicles and personal carriers on the direction. A little bit to the south right in front of Stilmachavaka. The Russians were bombing the Ukraine positions with artillery attacks and we see 
some uh, certain activization from the Russian side because a month ago almost nothing we were receiving almost nothing we were receiving from the direction but now if we increase the numbers of dates let's say since the beginning of April we can see a certain activity at least on this line let's say the Russians are have some focus have certain activity exactly on this area so every single town and village on this direction was already under Russian fire and of course the Russians have certain focus on the town by the name of Barova. On this video we can see another the results, the consequences of Russian attack with missiles, with FAPs. Uh, the Rus Barova is the main town on the direction which that connects one bank of Askol River with another. The Ukrainians use this area as the main logistic, as the main area where they let's say use and control concentrate forces and then they uh, let's say um, send one part to one direction, another part to another. So that's why the Russians are very focused on this area. South in Kupin's direction, the Russians during the previous 24 hours conducted few offensives in direction of Tirny and Polovka, but uh, another wave of Russian attack was repelled by the Ukrainians. Now, the Ukrainians once again were using mainly the FPV drones and artillery strikes, and as a result of less long range duels, the Russians lost the battle, they lost significant number of armored vehicles, personal carriers, and then the Russians were forced to fall back. So, I'll remind you that during the previous few weeks, the Russians made significant number, not weeks, months, the Russians made significant number of attacks, first on the north in direction, trying to enter Tyranny, then the Russians were trying to attack the, the Ukrainians on the central direction, but those attacks were also repelled by the Ukrainians and now we see that the Russians are trying to attack the Ukrainians on the south in direction and at least first wave first wave attack was uh, repelled by the Ukrainians and the Russians having significant losses were for forced to fall back so this is for now uh, uncrackable nut for the Russians so we'll see what is going to be next now we are moving to the south in direction of um, uh, in direction of Bilagorovka, the Russians continue storming uh, the stronghold. We have additional video of the Russians storm the landfill. You know that uh, the battle is very difficult. The battle is very difficult when talking about other directions. At some directions, the Russians have progress up to 200 meters per day. But when talking about Bilagorovka, the Russians probably have progress of 10-15 meters just in week so the situation is so complicated a uh, direction the russians continue clearing the crane positions along the railways few more additional videos were received from the area of how the russians were fpv droning the Ukrainian forces trying to prepare the foothold for further offensive operation to understand the situation along the railways of course it's better to increase the numbers of this since the beginning of the month and if we take a look at this map now we have uh, the clear picture the clear understanding of what the russians are doing the russians are focused focused on the railway itself and on the Ukraine positions on the western flank and on the eastern flank as well. Significant concentration, almost complete absence of, uh, let's say, any resistance from the Ukrainian side. Uh, it's a clearing operation. Currently, it's very difficult to uh, understand and to uh, tell, uh, to say how long this clearing operation is going to take place. But obviously, maybe in a week, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but the Russians will make another attempt to attack with the purpose to establish control over additional three lines on the fortifications along the way uh, to the Vyemka railway station. Razdolovka, the same story. Few more videos were received during the previous 24-48 hours of how the Russians were clearing the area with FPV drones. Significant number of damage, significant number of losses from the Ukrainian side, but with the, for now without any changes on the ground. Once again, to understand the situation, it's better to increase the number of updates. We see a certain Russian focus, but no attempts to attack on the ground. So very likely the Russians also are going to continue the clearing operation and then they will start an offensive. At uh, Chasavyar, no updates during the previous 24 hours. After the, Russians, after the Russians reached the main defense belt in the eastern part, they stopped. Currently, now... Uh, when talking about the Russian focus, they mainly they are focused on the area between Kalinovka and Bogdanovka itself. Significant number of FPV drone strikes against the Ukrainian positions, which confirms that very likely this is the next Russian target in the area. So lots of strikes, lots of FPV drone strikes, lots of FPV drone bombing. So we see the road possible road of Russian attack. When we make a conclusion based on the geolocations, very likely the Russians are planning to attack uh, using this road and to do something like this. And obviously. 
can't, we can't tell for sure when exactly the Russians are going to start this movement. Maybe a week, maybe less, but sooner or later they're going to do this. Eastern Chasov Yar, according to most of the mappers, uh, the Russians managed to enter the eastern part. But according to geolocations we received, there are still Ukrainians and the Russians still continue the clearing of the eastern part. So for now, I believe it's better to even return control over uh, over uh, of the area by the Ukrainians and to change the color of the area. Uh, Klishievka, the Russian sources continue offensive operation. Today we got additional batch of videos of FPV and artillery strikes inside of the village. And now the Russians are very focused on the direction. Very likely during the next few days, the Russians will make forced attempts to attack the Ukraine positions in the vicinity of Andreevka and in the vicinity in the area between Avdreevka and Klishievka itself. Uh, but for now, no changes on the ground. Now we are moving to Avdiyevka area where we got significant number of details and updates, especially from the northern flank from Achiretina area. If you remember, just in the morning we were talking that the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, according to different mappers, pro-Ukrainian, pro-Russian and let's say neutral, managed to stop enter the uh, Achiretina itself, the southeastern part, and to capture the first streets uh, of the settlement, like Ivana Franka and Zaliznichna. Later we got the first geolocations confirming that Russian progress. This video was published by the Ukrainians and in this video we can see how the Russian troopers and infantry were moving along the trenches in direction of the stronghold. This is the first buildings in the Chiretin and how the Russians managed to, under very heavy fire of armed forces of Ukraine, managed to capture the territory. And later we got another video from the same area of how the Russians or a batch of Russian troopers were abandoning their positions on the outskirts of Chiretin. This video was captured, was taken by the Ukrainians immediately by the Ukrainian society and they start discussing this video telling people that the Russians under very heavy Ukraine pressure decided to fall back and left their positions from a because the Ukrainians conducted significant number of counter-attacks and different other different things. Uh, the Russians, of course, have completely different opinion. They are saying that this is a kind of regrouping. The Russians managed to establish control over some buildings and now they decided to abandon some positions to remove unnecessary forces and so on. If you ask my opinion, I believe that both sides, either the Russians and the Ukrainians, are completely right. The Russians managed to break through the defense belt mainly because of complete collapse of organization and control command of 115th Brigade. This brigade basically was defeated on the direction which allowed the Russians to achieve significant progress and to enter Chiretina itself. After the Ukrainians realized how deep, how big problems they have, they managed to redeploy significant number of reinforcement and infantry and soldiers on the direction with the purpose to stabilize the line of combat contact and not to allow the Russians to establish complete control over the south and Achiretina. And very likely the Russians were about to continue offensive. They, according to the video you've just seen, they managed to concentrate a significant number of soldiers, up to 100 soldiers, and probably they were planning to move further, but later they received an order to stop and to fall back. And obviously uh, not the entire crew, not the entire group of Russian forces left the area. Very likely a lot of soldiers, the Russians kept in the area just to dig in deeper, to, uh, uh, let's say, to reinforce the area, to prepare trenches and to repel possible Ukraine counterattacks. And the question is, so why uh, the Russians did the Russians uh, left the, uh, leave the area on the video? The answer is very simple. Just take a look at once again at the video, you're going to see one building. This is the building. And the Russians uh, concentrated just in one building up to 100 soldiers. So it was like concentration of forces before further attack. And of course, when the Russians realized that for now, probably they managed to get results during momentum, but now momentum has ended, Ukrainians managed to stabilize the situation, they realized that to stay in this building is too dangerous. Because one JDAM missile, one JDAM bomb, and 100 soldiers could be buried under the ruins of the building. So that's why the Russians made a very small smart decision they decided to fall back and to stretch their forces along this tree line so now the russians control not just this small building but the russians control everything along this along the railways and now they have significant number of forces that are ready to, uh, for further offensive operation
The question is wh when the Russians are going to continue their offensive operation further, let's say, to the uh, southwestern part of Acheretina. And this is very, very simple. Before, uh, let's say, discuss this operation, let's discuss a few more updates that were published by pro-Ukrainian mappers. According to information we have, the Russians also managed to establish control over these three lines. Uh, this information was confirmed by Deep State Map and by uh, neutral mapper Syriac. And once again, if the Russians want to continue moving further to Acheretina, it is possible just if the Russians control Novobakhmutovka and Berdychi. So now the Russians managed to achieve and to get everything they needed. They managed to cut the second defense belt in two parts. Achiretin and Novobakhmutovka are no longer have any connections. Just one connection that goes uh, to the west of Achiretina and down to the south of Solovyova. So this is the next line, but this is not the defense belt. This is just supply road. So that's why now the Russians need to solve one big important issue. They need to maintain their positions and they need to improve the foothold to the south of Achiretina. So basically, simply saying, the Russians need, need to establish control over everything uh, in this area that we will mark right now with uh, some polygons. So everything in this white square should be captured by the Russians if they want to continue their offensive operation further in direction of Achiretina and then in direction of Pakrovsk. So all these towns and cities, all these villages and fields should be captured by the Russians if they want to continue moving further. Without capturing this area and let's say if the Russians decide to move further to Achiretina, just imagine yourself the closest let's say area where the Russians can be in the safe in safe site is Avdiivka chemical plant. So the Russians need to use this road for a deployment of significant number of forces, tanks, armored vehicles, supply support, evacuation of wounded, and all the way along from Avdeevka to Achiretina, the Russians would be under very heavy fire of FPV drones of armored forces of Ukraine from Novobakhmutovka, uh, from Berdychi in the, let's say, by 47th Mechanized Brigade, from Novokalinova and Keramik. So that's why the Russians will suffer significant losses and they will never be able to capture Achiretina. So to reduce the pressure on the flanks, first the Russians need to increase and to establish control over the flanks and to force the Ukrainians to fall back as far as possible. And only after that the Russians would be able to continue offensive to Achiretina. So the, let's say, southwestern flank, everything is clear. And also, if the Russians want to move further to Achiretina, they need to establish control over the southern part of Novokalinova Keramik, so basically to capture everything that located to the south of the Pershatravnyova street. So everything that located in this uh, gray zone should be also captured by the Russians if they want to continue moving further to Achiretina. And when talking about Novokalinova Keramik, the Russians are about to finish uh, these goals because uh, this morning we got some updates from Deep State. According to today's information, we see significant Russian progress. And later we got the first geolocations confirming the Russian presence inside of Novokalinova. On this video, according to the author of the video, the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian forces inside of the village. So now this is the primary targets of the Russians to capture one foothold Novobakhmutovka Berdychi, then to capture Novokalinovka or to do this synchronously and as soon as they do this uh, we can start counting days when uh, um, Achiretina falls as well. The, uh, let's say, Pervomaiskaya direction, Italova, we haven't received anything, just some old videos published by the Ukrainians of another Russian attack in direction of uh, Yasnabrodovka. That attack was repelled by the Ukrainians and the Russians were fall forced to fall back. We still haven't received anything from, let's say, Nitailova, Nivoiska, uh, Cauldron or Salient or Artillery Pocket. The last report we have is that the Russian Russians managed to establish control over this territory, but yet we haven't received even a single geolocation confirming this, and still we haven't received any reports whether the Ukrainians, let's say, abandoned their positions in the fields and moved towards Karlovka. We don't have these updates, and currently it's we don't understand what exactly is happening there. Now we are moving to Krasnogorovka. Uh, Krasnogorovka is almost the same situation, the same story as with Achiretina. During the previous few days, the Russians managed to establish and improve and to get significant results as a result of offensive operation in direction of the village, of the stronghold. Sorry, and according to different mappers, the Russians already established control, have already established control over this territory. So significant results, significant progress in the southern part, in the central part. So this is a very strong and big foothold of the armed 
armed force of Russian Federation in the southern part. So the question is what the Russians are going to do next. Yesterday we were talking that according to some sources the Russians have already uh, launched their offensive operation in direction of the let's say plant in industrial zone but yet we haven't received even a single confirmation whether the Russians managed to achieve some results or not. When talking about geolocations we see significant Russian focus in the central and the northern part. We see that the Russians that the focus is moving further and further to the north. We see that uh, yesterday we were talking about the focus in the southeastern part. Now we see the Russians are focused they're fo uh, focusing in the northeastern part and closer and closer to the north which confirms that Ukrainians also are moving and moving uh, further further let's say to the outskirts northwestern outskirts of the village with the purpose and with the possibilities to abandon their positions as soon as they receive order but when talking about the Russians obviously the next thing the Russians are going to do is to establish control over the farms that located on the southwest part of the village so this is going to be a short Russian goal on this direction during the next few days maybe the Russians have already established control over the farms and as soon as the Russians are able to do this we can make a conclusion that everything that located let's say in this area between water reservoirs and Krasnogorovka itself will collapse automatically and the Russians will be able to establish complete control over the territory and then the Russians will be able to let's say completely clear the territory and to get as close as possible and to get to a very perfect positions against the Ukrainians who are currently located in Georgievka and Maximilianovka. So uh, the same story, to move further to Krasnogorovka the Russians need to fix the issues to the south of Krasnogorovka and, and in these fields because to reduce the risk of being attacked or counter-attacked by the Ukrainians, let's say from the uh, southwestern direction. So the Russians don't want to have this uh, before moving further to the north they need to secure the southwestern flank and then they can move further to the south with the purpose to establish complete control over Krasnogorovka and this is exactly what is going to be during the next few days so once again almost the same story to secure the flank and then to move further Nova Mikhailovka the Russians entered the final phase of the offensive operation for the village for the western village the Ru as you can see we have three icons and most of them most of the icons are located on the southwestern part let's move one by one on this video we can see uh, the Russian attempts to attack the Ukrainian strongholds significant number of personal carriers infantry of Russian forces were storming the Ukrainian positions the Ukrainians were fighting of course the Ukrainians didn't surrender and didn't fall back maybe they didn't have possibilities to do this so we don't we will not watch the video till the end but this video shows uh, how the Russians were moving from one trenches to another from one let's say position to another and how the Russians in the end answered the final trenches and and then the clashes were taking place inside of the trenches in this part of Nova Mikhailovka. On this video we can see the beginning of this process of how the Russians were bombing as you can see nightmare in the western Nova Mikhailovka, significant artillery preparation. Uh, as we, we see this the town was turned into dust a long time ago so after this artillery preparation so that was probably the first video artillery preparation and then the Russian attack that we uh, just uh, saw at the beginning. And the final the most important Important video is taking place on the western part of Nova Mikhailovka. This is it. On this video, we can see Ukrainian counterattack. We see Ukraine Max Pro arrived in the area, and then uh, the Ukrainians landed infantry, and the Ukraine infantry started clearing the trenches, clearing the trenches. And at some point, we see uh, how the Russians attacked Max Pro with anti-tank missile, and Max Pro was destroyed. So, if we return back on map, basically the next thing happened in the area. So, uh, as I understand, as I understand, during the previous 24 hours, the Russians managed to establish complete control over this part of the trenches. So somehow the Russians moved along this tree line, they entered this area and tried to dig in deeper. And of course, if the Russians entered this territory, this is complete collapse and basically this is already a physical or and short rifle control over the main supply road that goes from Konstantinovka to Novomikhailovka. So, as you can see, once again, the Russians were attacking like this the russians were attacking like this and the russians were attacking something like this and as a result of a series of attacks the russians managed to establish control uh, completely over the uh, southern part of Novy of course something like this was captured just as a result of attacks and when the ukrainians lost control over the foothold they start counter-attacking and on the video we saw the ukraine max pro arrived as close as possible to the trenches then ukraine infantry landed in the area 
and the clashes and fightings, close combat, uh, start taking place exactly in this part of uh, fortifications and trenches. Currently, we don't know for sure whether the Russians managed to repel that attack or not. Maybe even if the Russians haven't managed to repel, obviously the Russians during the next few hours or minutes send additional reinforcement and the clashes for this, uh, let's say, tree line continues. So we can say that 18th of April is, uh, we can say, is officially is the final page of the battle for Novy Mikhailovka. I'm not saying you telling you that um, the battle uh, have already finished or will be finished today, but obviously this is the last page and these are the last days of the Western Novy Mikhailovka. Now we are moving further. We haven't received anything from Mugledar, just small activity in the South Donetsk direction. We have small activity of the Russians in the vicinity of Rajaina. The Russians, after a very short operational pause, start bombing this area once again with the FAPs and with RBK 500 to clear the trenches uh, of, from Ukrainian soldiers. Very likely, soon we're going to see something. Uh, let's say Malinovka and Uglepoli area. We have some FAPs arriving in the area. The Russians were bombing the territory heavily. Uh, but uh, for now, no operations on the ground. We don't have any activity from the Russian side in the vicinity of Zaporozhye. So we see that uh, lots of updates. The Russians started the final battle for Novomikhailovka. The Russians managed to enter Chiret. Now they need to secure the flanks. Krasnogorovka is about to be to captured as well. No updates from Chasavyar for some reasons. Bilagorovka, very short progress, uh, not nothing too significant. Now let's discuss few political updates. The Western countries are saying that Ukraine Ukraine's goal is to hold out in battle for another six months, so basically until the end of this year. Today, G German Vice Chancellor Robert Habeck arrived in Kiev probably to discuss the sending of additional IRST system. Uh, the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of, United of Ukraine demanded the Western countries and NATO countries to start bringing down the Russian missiles and Russian drones all over the entire territory of Ukraine. But as we know, the Western countries for now were refusing to doing this. Uh, furthermore, we have uh, additional reports that uh, uh, Ukraine must provide itself with soldiers, NATO allies, supply it with funds, Secretary General Stoltenberg. So we can say that Western countries are planning to continue the war and the special military operation despite the losses and despite that probably the war is going to be till the last Ukrainian. And furthermore, the House of Representatives project involves appropriating 61 billion in connection with the conflict in Ukraine, including 23 billion to replenish US arsenals. So United States of America will send money. Don't have any doubts about this, but one important thing is timings. When exactly the Senate and the government of United States of America is going or will be able to finish all these, let's say, legal procedures. Because one important th thing, uh, there is like Senate, President, many, many other things, but there is one important, let's say, uh, ministry in United States of America, the Ministry of Finance. And according to information we have, the Ministry of Finance uh, uh, told today that they would not allow uh, transferring of any funds or any help to Ukraine after 21st of May when Zelensky lose his legal power because his terms of presence will be ended. So that's why the Western countries need to fish, finish everything before 20th of May or uh, Zelensky will be forced to start president elections because they need a legal signature because Russia and nobody in the world will confirm any papers signed by Zelensky after the 20th of uh, May and this words was also confirmed today by the president of Belarus Lukashenko who basically sent the message of Putin to the western countries that after 21st of May we will not let's confirm and recognize anything signed by Zelensky including the deaths of Ukraine and that's that's it for today. Military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.